All right, so let's talk about the Elite Series 2 after 234 days of owning it. And I'll tell you guys how I feel about the controller overall, build quality, battery life, nitpicks, whatever I think about. Um, series 1 was okay. The battery life was fine because it used double A's, rechargeable. I put the rechargeable play and charge in it, never had a problem with battery life. The build quality, on the other hand, was absolutely terrible. Stick drift, um, bumper's not working, button's falling off, grip's falling off. The thing coming split apart a little bit when I played with it once. I had an extended warranty and I went through, I think four, I think this is actually the fifth one. So love the controller, uh, feels great in the hand, absolutely hate the reliability. Series two, they claim they changed the internals. Anybody believe that? I didn't at first, honestly. I thought we were gonna get the same stick drift. I was just happy we had three buttons and it looked with the different grips or whatever. But I think I've been proven wrong. I game on this a lot. Uh, I've had some long gaming sessions. You know, I've even gamed for 12, 12 hour sessions straight on this thing, you know, playing Battlefield, whatever. I don't game every single day or 10 hours a day every day when I game but I game fairly a lot. I use this every time I game since I quit using this. And the battery life's great. No stick drift issues. Um, the grips are solid as a rock. The buttons are solid. Um, I haven't had any complaints about it. I actually am really surprised. The battery life, let's talk about that. I don't even know where the battery cable, the USB-C cord is right now. That's how long the battery lasts. They claim 40 hours. It's every bit of 40 hours, if not a little bit more, depending on how you game. I turned the LED light. This is this default setting. I turn it all the way down. I know it's LED, so it's not going to draw that much power and make a difference. But I'm just saying it could you know, help a little bit. I, uh, I use vibration. I'm pretty sure if you turned off all the vibration, you'd get even longer battery life. But I don't need it any longer. I mean, I don't even know where the cable is, and I haven't charged it in a week or more. Um, it, it's great. The joysticks... I do wish that we got these mid-length dome sticks to go on this. You can put them on here, and you can game with it like that. I don't recommend it because they're not tight. as you, They just come right off. They're not magnetic. I really wish we got these joysticks. They're my favorite ones. Um, but I, I, my current setup is the shorty and the shorty dome here. I think I'm going to switch today back to these 360 ones just because... Um, I know I used to like them, and I, I did it when it first came out. I was changing between all of them. I haven't tried these in a while, but now that I'm used to the controller, I might just go back to these. And it, Something about having a dome joystick over here where you're moving around a lot just works well with me because your finger can always roll around the, the joystick when you need to. Shooters can always stay center, but this always needs to move. So I, I like having the dome on the left side. Maybe I'll just try this over here, see how that works. My thumb just doesn't fit on it well. On the 360 days, I loved it, but now that I'm used to the regular sticks, I don't really like it as much. Paddles, this isn't how I use my paddles. I always have them like this. That's my main setup. If I run four, I run four and put these on the top. I've seen people do this. I tried this the other day, just that's why it's like that. I don't like two paddles on one side. I just don't like it. People like it, people like two paddles. I've even seen people take, literally take the paddles off these, which look at the difference in that. I mean, that's massive. That's the, what's what you had before. That's much better to have a smaller paddle. I've even seen people take these and put this down here like that and game like that. And you need this one up there because this little notch gets in the way. The little notch. But I've seen people do this. That's not a bad way to do it, really. I mean, it's it's fine. You can do that. The paddles interchange. Might try it. Haven't haven't tried it, but might try it. Um, I don't. The bottom paddles are cool, but. They just, they're too down low. I mean, they're all right. I'm not a fan of the bottom paddles. I will play with them when I'm playing like a game that, like Battlefield where I need to like crouch and heal or whatever at the same time, but not really a huge fan. I don't find a need for the bottom paddles. Um, as far as the grips and everything go, nothing's wrong with them. I haven't, nothing's fallen off. They're great. I wipe it down with a damp rag every time I get done playing with it, just because it does pick up a little lint. You'll get some white lint on it. And just, I just want it's a $200 controller. Come on, you want to keep it clean? I don't game any Cheetos, but I'm sure there's people out there that this thing's orange from Cheeto dust. I mean, why are you going to do that to your controller? Don't, don't abuse your controllers, guys. Well, it's $200. Come on.
treat it with the respect, you know? Um, about the trigger locks, I'm just going on a list of things I've noticed. The trigger locks, with it all the way down, you hear that sounds? I don't like that. I like this. It's quiet, it's fluid, it feels good. When you put it on the first notch, it just feels, I don't like hearing that. I don't know why, it drives me nuts. You can feel it, it feels clunky, it feels cheap. I like this. If they could make this, this, if they could make that feel like this, I'd be all down for the trigger locks. I'm trying to get used to using a notch of trigger locks on shooters to get a little bit better, you know, ADS time, whatever, but I just can't do it. It's more comfortable to me to play like this. I'd rather pull this trigger, you know, slowly than anything. And when I have the triggers on FPS games, I always turn the sensitivity to the minimum. So, I mean, as soon as you breathe on that, it's, it's firing. So just, there's no need for a trigger lock. It's already shot. I just touch, it's already shot. I think when you do this, the, the trigger lock, I think it automatically changes that sensitivity so it's a fire as soon as it hits the wall. But you can just program this in the settings so as soon as you touch that, it's firing the trigger. You don't need the lock. It just shortens the throw, but if you're only doing this anyways, I do this. There's no point in having this clunky noise tell me I've met the end of my wall on the trigger. The charging dock, I don't ever take it out of the case. I could see why you would if you had a setup and want to put it on your desk. It'd look really nice. Um, I mean, if you just had a setup, that would look really clean to have it sitting there. It looks like it's floating. You just take it off, leave it charged, plugged in. If you drilled a hole in your desk and put the cable right through the hole, you know, that'd look pretty slick, but I don't, I don't do that. I don't, um, I keep it in the case. I just keep it protected. After all the issues with the other one, I keep it protected. Speaking of the case though, this little flap right here never stays closed. It's always open. I think the second you set it on a desk, it kind of pops open like that. I get why they did it to make the case sealed up all the way, but still have a pass through. But honestly, every time I put it on the desk, it pops open. Every time I pick it up, it's flipped open. The only time it's ever closed is when it's me manually closing it. The strap here, I've never clipped it to anything, but I could see how if you were like going to a gaming convention or whatever, land tournament, whatever, for console, you might want to clip this to your backpack or something to keep it outside of the backpack because I wouldn't want to put this in the backpack and have everything sitting on the joystick so you can feel it click in. I wouldn't want to have it in my backpack with them smashed clicked just because of reliability issues with the Series 1 and how god-awful it was with um, reliability on the joysticks. I mean, I went through five of them. Come on, that's ridiculous for a $100 controller. Um, the case quality, this one doesn't pick up lint near as bad as this one. This one, it's softer, it picks up lint like crazy, dirt, whatever. This one's easy to wipe out, easy to keep clean. You can take this thing out. You can easily clean that, great. Really like the case. The one gripe with the case, they always put this, this thing here. You can put like a, what is it called? A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack cable in here for your headset or something. But putting that bulky uh, USB-C charging cable up in here, you can literally feel when you close this, it clicks the joysticks down and it stays like that. It's just not, this sits directly on top of the joystick. So there's no room. I mean, there's not, there's not a big enough gap when you close that to fit that cable up there. You can already see there's indentions from the joysticks themselves when you close that. So what I do with the USB-C cable, I just wrap it up nicely and tuck it right in here when I store it. I don't ever put anything here because I know when you close that and zip it down, it puts pressure on the joysticks and I just don't like that. If they made the case a little thicker, I could see having something here. Also, if they just put a zipper or a Velcro strap to keep this closed, because the second you flip it open on the table, your stuff comes flying out of there. If you wanted to put these in there for whatever reason, the second you do that and then you pick it up or whatever, they're falling out. So it's just not... I don't, that's kind of weird. I don't know why this is here. It's cool, but it doesn't do what they said it should do is hold the charging cable or hold accessories. It doesn't really offer enough room. Um, what else? The, the, the buttons to change the preset really like this. Uh, say I'm playing battlefield. I want to run a medic class. I'll have it on setting one. If I want to run support and have different button maps to different like gadgets or whatever, it's quick to setting two. you know, assault setting three, or even if I'm playing Red Ever Redemption 2, have it on one, change it, you know, it's great. Having three, you didn't think it's really that necessary or why do you need one more, but it, it works, it's great. I don't even know what these are set to because I change them in the app so much. When I play games, I always change these to whatever game I'm about to play next or whatever. I do have this LED light turned all the way down to the lowest brightness, that's default. And then that's 
as dim as it gets. That's a little bit brighter, um, but that's the dimmest mode. On this controller, it was so bright, I actually put a little decal sticker over it to cover it. It looks stupid, but it just keeps the light out of your face. If you game in a dark room and you have this one turned all the way up, you know how annoying that is in your face. It's just, I don't know why they put bright LEDs on controllers that are just holding in front of your face. It just, it's annoying. I like this one all the way dim. It's plenty dim. I don't even notice it being bright. Have no issue with it. The grayed out buttons are cool. I do like the fact that this has the green accent here, but it's not a huge deal. I was rocking this one for a while just to you know spice it up have some different color there but ultimately i went back to the the dark one um nothing else to really complain about i'm a, i'm actually really happy uh just to speak on my setting for these guys i tighten it all the way i i like it tight um i might try to go back and forth with it now that i've got some muscle memory to it being tight as soon as you loosen it up uh, you, you know how it is, you go game with that. Now your aim's all whack. So I kind of just played with it loose and then tightened it and then tightened it again as I played more. And now I'm on the tightest setting and I'm used to that. So I don't know why you would want to change these up for every game you play. I feel like to me that just throw your muscle memory of the joysticks off completely. Um, same reason I don't change the sticks out that often, you know, but I mean, if you're if you're a gamer who can run Rocket League on loose and then put it on Call of Duty and tighten it down and be fine with your aim, I guess if you did it specifically for each game and learned the muscle memory for this stick movement, that'd be fine. But I just, I like it tight. But I think I might try to switch it out a little bit more, just see how it works. Maybe I'll find something I like for different games. But for right now, I've just been having it in the tightest setting. I never use this D-pad. Um, I don't, I can't even get it out of here. It's like... Stuck. All right. I never use that. I do think it looks fine. I mean, it's, it's cool. I just don't know why this one's, this is the thing that sets it apart is this D-pad from your basic, you know, four-way controller D-pad. So I just keep that on there. I think it's, it looks cool. Um, it's not any, I don't think it's any better if you're playing some fighting in with a diagonal combo, but it's still, you're still pushing, t you know, that. So it's really not any different to me than hitting both. Or like whatever i don't know i don't know i don't play fighting games i don't know what you guys like this diagonal d-pad for that play fighting that's what they they said if you play fighting games you're gonna like this i don't know maybe you do um other than that i'm happy with it i've been rambling long enough would i get a series two if i had the series one um i'd try to sell this guy honestly for even 75 bucks to knock some this is 200 dollars uh with the extended warranty it was even more than that this one was like 150 or something like that. I'd try to sell this guy, even for 70 bucks, whatever they're going for on eBay. Because once you get this guy, you're never going to pick this back up. The only reason I kept this one is to continue uh, to do videos about it or just to, you know, compare and contrast. If they released in the Series 3, to have all three of them, I think it'd be cool. But if you're just, just trying to upgrade to this guy, I've never gone back to this. I don't intend to. I do like how it feels in the hand, but I just, once you're used to this one and the grips and it's, it, it feels different, there's no reason to go back. So I'd, I'd sell your series one, get rid of it. Don't sell a broken one to somebody and, you know, rip them off for the price, but you know, get rid of it. Pick this one up. I think you'll like it. The USB-C charging is great. The internal batteries last forever. Uh, just, I think it's a good controller. I think they did a good job with it. I'll make another video if I do have any problems with it. If it, if the stick starts to drift or whatever, I'll make a video and update anyone. But overall, I think it was worth the money. Definitely expensive, 200 bucks for a controller. I mean, what is that, half the price of a console? But, I mean, when you game a lot and you enjoy it, you can take this over to PC. It's got Bluetooth. You can put it on your mobile phone now, I'm pretty sure, with xCloud or whatever. I think it's worth it. Good deal. So that's my thought of the Elite Series 2. After 234 or five days of ownership. Um, yeah, thanks. Have a good one.